hear me out for a second. If you want to be productive in the long term, it might be not the best idea to be efficient all the time. Instead, you should try and build your resilience. What do I mean about that? If you look at the biographies of successful people, let's take, for example, Steve Jobs, you will see that all these people, they didn't have a linear life. They actually had a life where they they started to do something good and suddenly they faced adversity, whether this is a loss of a loved one or a challenge with their health or a challenge with their business and their career. They all face adversity. And when it comes to adversity, they manage to face this adversity. They manage to bounce back and they manage to continue and and be successful. Now, all the books and the stories, they told us that these people are extraordinary. But in actual fact, the skill that I'm going to talk about is a skill that we can all practice. And this skill is called resilience. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Sophia. I'm a productivity geek, I'm a business manager. And in this channel, I am sharing ideas, thoughts, and inspiration on how you can make the most of your time. So if you like these topics, please join me in this journey by clicking on the subscribe and the notification button below. Now let's go back to our topic of resilience. The common thread in the books and the articles I read was that resilience is actually a skill that we can build by practice. It's like a muscle. Yes, some people are born more resilient than others, but in actual fact, if you compare people who have been through a lot, like the generation of my parents who have been through war and hunger, you can see that these people are resilient not because they have a natural talent, but because their life made them more resilient. For this episode, I prepared a few practical tips for you so you can build more resilience by doing simple changes in your life. And the first tip is practice being rejected. This tip might sound counterintuitive, it might sound a bit strange. So if you're thinking, Sophia, what do you mean practice being rejected? hear me out. In 2007, Nassim Taleb published the book Black Swan. Black Swan is considered one of the 12 most influential books since the Second World War. Nassim is an options trader and in his book he explored the way people behave when unlikely events happen, like for example a crash in the stock market. And what the book says is that If you practice failing, if you practice being rejected, if you practice feeling that bad feeling uh, that we all feel when something doesn't go well, then you are more likely to react better when worse things happen. Or in his own words, avoiding mistakes makes bigger ones even more severe. Let me give you an example from my personal life. When I finished my degree and I was looking for a job, I was really stressed out. So I I started sending applications left and right to different jobs and I was getting rejected all the time. Now my friend, who is more reserved than I am, she was really careful about, you know, her applications, crafting her CV, her cover letter, and she was sending far fewer applications. A few months later, we, st- we were still both unemployed and she came to me and she said to me, how can you manage being rejected all the time? And I said to her, look, I got used to it. I don't care anymore. So what happens is that I go through each of the application and I improve a few things and I just continue. Long story short, I got a job much faster than my friend did because I got used to being rejected. For me, if someone said no to me, it didn't matter anymore. That's actually the first lesson that salespeople learn. And that's our first tip. If you want to become more resilient, practice putting yourself out there. Practice being rejected. After you have done it a few times, your body and your mind gets into a different state and you're not as scared to get out. People say failure is good because failure is a lesson. But let me tell you something. Learning can sometimes be even more difficult 
than the failure itself. So that brings me to the second tip, practice learning something new. If tomorrow I fall or I have an accident and I break my right hand, I assure you that the most difficult thing about this experience will not be that I broke my right hand. The most difficult thing will be that I will have to write with my left hand. Most of the times when we face a difficult event, the way to overcome it is to learn something new is to do something in a different way. And the experience of changing and learning can be difficult. In Greek, we have this word called resili. Resili means being embarrassed. And sometimes learning something new feels a bit embarrassing. For example, if I would start writing with my left hand and sending handwritten cards to my friends, it would certainly feel embarrassing for me because my handwriting will not be that good. A few months ago I started CrossFit because I wanted to become stronger and fitter and I found myself in a group of people that were much younger and much fitter than me and I couldn't keep up and it was embarrassing. I was always the last one to finish the exercises. And I was talking about it with my friend and she told me, you're building resilience. And I said to her, what do you mean? She told me, you know, resili, being embarrassed and resilience are connected. And she showed me this graphic. Makes sense if you're Greek, but I'll, I will explain it to the ones that are not uh, Greek speakers. The cartoon on the left says, what are you doing? You're going to embarrass yourself. And the second one says, I don't care. And then it says resilience. My friends, learning new things helps you build resilience. And I'm not saying you have to go now and do something exuberant, but try to uh, challenge yourself by learning a new skill whether it's sports or music or arts or something related to your career. The third tip, manage your energy. Resilience is deeply connected with your energy. I'm reading this book recently and I'm going to put it here on the screen. It's called The Power of Full Engagement. Let me know in the comments if you are interested to see a full review of the book. But then, the concept I want to present to you today is a concept that we as humans, we have four different buckets of energy. The authors of the book say that managing our energy and not our time is actually the key to high performance as well as health, wealth and life balance. And they present this pyramid of energy that I'm showing now in the screen. As humans, we have four buckets of energy. physical which is the energy that comes from our physical body, the emotional energy, the energy that comes with the way we feel. If you think about a statement saying, I feel energized today, I feel very good today. This is a statement that shows emotional energy. <clears throat> the next baguette is our mental energy. Mental energy is the energy we have to make complex thoughts and calculations and strategies. And finally, the spiritual energy, maybe the name is not exactly correct, but spiritual energy is the energy that we drive from having a goal and a purpose. If, for example, my goal is to run a marathon, this gives me a spiritual energy. In everyday life, and especially when we are faced with adversity, it is normal that one of these energy baguettes, or all of them, is depleted. The authors of the book, they say that it's really important that we balance the, both the expenditure of energy in each of these packets, but also we manage the renewal of the energy. I'm not going to go into more detail because I think that this video will become much longer. But as I said before, I am happy to go through the concepts that are described in the book and offer my own opinions on how managing your energy is actually helping you increase your resilience and your productivity. So if you want me to do that, please let me know in the comments below. The last tip I want to offer for today's videos is try to have routines in your life. I talk about routines a lot in my channel. I talk about managing your time, having a weekly schedule, etc. The reason I'm talking about that is that routines help us 
have the rhythm in life and they help us also overcome difficulties. I'm going to refer to another book here. I'm going to show it on the screen. A little imprisonment, if it is of your own making, can set you free. Rather than restricting your freedom, a routine gives you freedom by protecting you from the ups and downs of life and helping you advantage of your limited time, energy and talent. A routine establishes good habits and can lead to your best work. It's a book that I really enjoyed because it talks a lot about creative people such as myself. And, and in this book, he talks about the importance of having a routine. I have nothing further to add to that. So that's it for the video today. It was a short video about establishing resilience in your life. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think if you have any other ways in your life that help you build resilience i'm interested to know so let's keep the conversation going down in the comments below and in the meantime if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and uh, let me know if you if there are any videos related to productivity that you want to see in the future <laughs>